So let's talk about B2B marketing. First of all, there are some key differences between B2B and B2C marketing. Uh, they, these are meant to be guidelines. I'll explain how the guidelines actually collapse upon themselves in certain situations. The first is that B2B, B, the, the, the difference in business to consumer or business to business marketing would lead us to believe that the transaction is happening between two institutions when in fact it's always people buying from people. Whether or not it's B2C or it's B2B, it's always people buying from other people. In B2C marketing, the transaction can it can also be very trans it can be very transactional in nature, whereas B2B marketing is often very relationship driven. In B2C marketing, purchases can be impulse driven, whereas in B2B marketing, oftentimes purchases are considered, they're reflective, and they're taking place within the confines of a procurement process. Uh, sometimes a B2B, a B2C purchase solves a problem and other times it solves a craving. I live in a country that produces some of the world's best coffee, if you ask me, and I still, when I come back to Canada, go for my Tim Hortons Double Double and I do it knowing it's an inferior coffee, but it tastes like home, it tastes like nostalgia, and I love it for that reason. So Tim so Hortons is solving an impulse for me that goes well beyond any kind of mechanical process that I need. Uh, whereas with B2B marketing, there's usually two narratives. We're either uh, making people money or we're saving them money. It's sort of like uh, in literature, uh, there's, there's a saying that there's only two stories, which is a young man leaves his town on an adventure and a stranger comes to town. In B2B marketing, oftentimes you have the same thing. You're either making people money or you're saving people money, regardless of how you choose to dress up your pitch. In B2C marketing, you're usually dealing with a single decision maker. There's an asterisk here because if you're married like I do, maybe you need to seek permission to buy anything over $2.50. Uh, with B2B marketing, you have multiple decision makers and multiple decision influencers, and you're not always going to have access to all of the people who are involved in the decision making process, which means that we have our first sale, which is when we sell to the person we're talking to, and then we have to give them the assets and the arguments and everything else they need to turn around and sell internally. With B2C marketing, sales processes can afford to be more emotional than logical, and with B2B marketing, sales processes are, logical, are logically driven. That doesn't mean emotion doesn't play a part, but it plays less of a part. And finally, uh, Seth Godin has often said that we buy, uh, when we buy things, we're buying a better version of ourselves. And this is ultimately true in B2B marketing as well. Companies are trying to buy a better version of the company they'd like to be. So what this means is that in B2C marketing, you can sometimes get away with just being very, very tactical. We refer to this as hunter-gather marketing, where marketers will go to a piece of land, they will exhaust that land of resources, and then they will pick up and move somewhere else. Whereas because B2B marketing is so relationship-driven, you have to be strategic. We think of this as being sort of like a, a Freemason, where you're building a building, and every single brick in that building is contributing to your brand equity, which will allow you to weather storms and natural disasters and new competitors and whatnot. And even though everyone can see your building, there are certain secrets to its construction that only other Masons will see and understand. So